bloom and grow YouTube show. What is your plant care routine look like on like a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis? Like generally, uh, so you said it takes about 45 minutes to water. Is that like once a week or are you spending 45 minutes uh, every day? Yeah, about, no, 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 no. Um, about once a week. It's funny because I just like posted this on my story yesterday. So like I had watered them just before I left Fire Island and I haven't watered them since I've been back, the bulk mm. of them. And so my one tip to new plant people or to clients I work with is like, don't feel like you have to be on a strict schedule mm. for watering. Like so many people, um, especially when they're new, they're like, well, they tell me at the nursery, I have to water every week. So right. I watered it Saturday. So next Saturday's here. So I have to water it again. And I'm like, no, don't feel like you're in a, a schedule. Like, right, test the soil, feel it by weight, do whatever you need to do. If it's dry, then water it. If not, then, you know, don't worry about it. So um, I haven't watered most of my plants. It's been almost two weeks. I mean, maybe they hate me. I don't know. They seem to be okay. So I'll eventually get to it. I've just kind of been kind of lazy. So um, about once a week, I will uh, water them. Um, but as I said, that's not all of them. So my succulents, I'll leave alone for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. It's just like most of the aroids that I'll make sure that I water about every week. Daily, I'm kind of just like checking in on them to make sure, you know, that there's no pests, see if there's any growth, mm -hmm. anything weird or anything like that. Um, and then every once in a while, I will throw them in the shower. I find like the stromanthi or my maranta behind me or anything when it gets a shower as opposed to just watering, like really seems to enjoy that. So mm -hmm. and it's good just to kind of get the dust off. So I try and be good about dusting the leaves at least like once a month, um, but it just kind of depends. And how often are you showering them, do you think? Um, I don't shower all of them, just like kind of like the big ones, but maybe like two or three times a month. Yeah, I love that. I go in and out of phases where I take my plants in the shower. It really depends. Also, I've had so many different homes in the last year. Some showers are more accommodating than others. <laughs> Um, and I'm too scared to take them outside to hose them down. Cause I don't, I'm scared, scared. They're going to get pests. Cause I'm like in the middle of the woods right now. Um, but yeah, I think it's super fun and it feels like you're kind of recreating a mm -hmm. real tropical rainstorm yeah, or something yeah, yeah. for them. And once again, when you have a lot of plants showering them is a lot easier than hand wiping every single leaf, Yeah, you know, for, for three hours, you can just stick right. them in the shower and that shower is going to rinse those leaves off, which is so nice. Mm -hmm. And not only the dust, but potential pests that might, or eggs yep. that might be lying in around totally. the crevices, right? Yeah. Yep. I always have those. So yeah, yeah. I know yeah. pests are, it's not if it's when really yep. yeah. we're going to exactly. get pests and what exactly. kind of people. Um, that's awesome. What about you, Tiff? So yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know what? I am definitely one of those people that tend to be an overwaterer, but at the same time can be an underwaterer too, because I'll go on <laughs> periods of neglect I can totally on, relate. I can totally on some relate. of those plants. Mm -hmm. um, it, what's really great is that most of my plant collection is very forgiving, or at least I've trained them to be very forgiving mm -hmm. because of those periods of neglect. Um, like I struggle with mental health issues. So sometimes it's hard for me to really get to my plants every single day. Um, but yeah, like Paul was saying, when it comes to, you know, a weekly routine, like it's not a set schedule in terms of watering, um, get your moisture meter out, make sure that it is actually time for that watering. Um, but you know, those periods when I have, uh, a period of neglect, when it comes to watering my plants, I'll end up having to water all hundred plus of my plants. And that takes up a good two, three hours of my day because of how many plants I have. Um, I sometimes like to bottom water, um, which can save time and also waste time because of uh, the, sometimes I had like have like a fungus gnat infestation and I'll want to bottom water them just so the top layer of soil is dry. Um, and I find that sometimes bottom watering can really help save time when it comes to just setting it in the tub of water and letting it soak up. Um, when it comes to more of a monthly thing, monthly plant maintenance routine, um, definitely wiping down my plants. Um, because I went through a really bad pest infestation, I'm pretty adamant about wiping down my plants at least once a month. Um, with like a neem oil, Castile soap spray. Mm -hmm. um, 
I will also shower my plants every now and then, especially like the bigger ones, the ones that have the moss poles, because those moss poles get real crispy real fast. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shower really does help with that. Yeah. Um, but I find that like the next day, next two yep. days, they'll get crispy again. Yeah. Um, so next it's hour. Up, I give up <laughs> on trying to keep those moss poles moist. Like, same, yeah. same. Yeah. I think they're a great solution for, I have a plant parent personality test and I have these different profiles of different types of plant parent personalities. Mindful plant parents are people who want to like engage with their plants every day, but it sounds like you and me also can overwater because you're like wanting to love on your plants too much. And I think moss poles are a fantastic solution to that because you can just water your moss pole every hour on the hour. (laughs) And like, you're not going to have a problem. Like go to town on that moss pole. You'll feel like you're engaging with the plant. Um, but the moss, you know, and the moss pole will be moist and it'll keep drying out no matter what you do to it. You know, (laughs) exactly. Exactly. One of those, the best um invention that was created for plant parents is those automatic misters so that you don't always have to be like spraying yeah. like the ones that you just press a button and they're just spraying yeah those are so great for the moss yeah. poles. um but yeah they do get crispy real fast yep. um <laughs> uh and then just to add to my routine it would definitely have to be the uh beneficial insects that i was talking about before yeah. topping those up on like a two to three month basis um just as a preventative measure mm-hmm. because i don't want to deal with another thrips mm-hmm. infestation again um yeah i love that yeah it's interesting there's the like daily the week like there's the maintenance and then there's like the refresh it sounds like mm-hmm. both of you and camille i'm excited to hear what your routine is but i know that's for me too so Camille, similar, different? What's your it, experience? It is, I would say strikingly similar to Tiffany's. I am a less is more kind of plant parent. Like my, my plants have to be able to survive on a little benign neglect. Mm-hmm. And in kind of like figuring out who I am as a plant parent that has made my collection evolve. Like initially I was all about the Calatheas. And, <laughs> you know, who they are and who I am, they just don't line up, you know, they need way more than I have to give. So now I went from like 20 of them to I'm down to the last four. And I think that, you know, the last four are probably, if you ever want to call them easy and I'm using the air quotes here, you know, the rattlesnake, the peacock, the, Mm -hmm. um, What's the other one that I have left? The uh, fashada, you know, the really darker, thicker, the hardier ones. Yeah, the hardier ones. Those mm-hmm. are the the last few standing. So, my plants totally have to be able to survive a real drought. Like when I go mm-hmm. in to water them, that soil is dry. Mm-hmm. It, it will literally rise up the whole <laughs> block of it when I go back to rewater it. Because there's, you know, like social media will have you thinking like we spend all our time with these plants. There's, I'm so busy off of the gram. So my plants just have to be able to um, really withstand that. And I have seasonal care. So in the summertime, they all move outside. I have a huge covered porch and I get bugs when they're indoors. So I'm not afraid of bugs, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I do, I hate them. But I mean, like pests are kind of like just par for the course with plants. So when, every time I'm saying I'm bringing them outside, everybody's the first thing, oh, what about bugs? When they're not outside, you know, I'm battling spider mites or fungus gnats. So it's like, whatever. But before they come back in, I do um, a real uh, aggressive, like silkwood hose down Mm -hmm. then it's the bone eyed um systemics Mm -hmm. then you know everybody's getting named some soil will be refreshed so so far i'm knocking on wood i haven't you know brought anything crazy in from their summers outdoors so that that's my seasonal care i think bringing plants outside for the summer is such a great idea and 
um, I think as long as it's like totally worth it, if you just do the, all the steps that you mentioned at the end, like you can't bring your plants outdoors and then just bring them back inside. Right, exactly. You're asking for trouble, but yeah, it's, lo- but it's totally worth it. You know what? It's going to take a couple hours in the fall for you to spray everyone down and like, make sure that, you know, right. quarantine them when you bring them in, but for like four months outside on your porch yeah. and them getting more sun and, you know, probably pro- growing a lot more significantly than indoors it sounds like it's totally worth it yep i've had i have hoyas that did literally nothing for Mm -hmm. an entire year right they are going crazy right now Mm -hmm. they are putting out so much new growth i mean they just love it and the summers in new york are swampy Mm -hmm. you know and i live in um an old victorian with 10 foot um ceilings i cannot no humidifier is going (laughs) to tackle that dry air there's nothing I can do yeah you know to raise the moisture in my house during the winter time so summer you know they get to live their like full best lives Mm -hmm. that's what you know I I get to water as messy as I want I'm 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 a mess when it comes to watering (laughs) I was about to say with Hoyas I find that they are great for those plant parents that are more neglectful yeah just because I find that Hoyas kind of thrive on that drought period. Do you find that too, Camille? Yeah, Just because... they're, they're tropical succulents, you know, yeah. unlike desert succulents, but they both, you know, they don't need to be watered often at all. Exactly. And I find that it even is beneficial, especially if you want to encourage blooms. For yes, Hoyas. exactly. Um, yeah, because it puts them into that survival mode yep. and they'll want to push out blooms so that they can pollinate um, yeah. and survive, right? So because I went through like, I went through like a two week, no watering of my Hoyas, not on purpose, but because I was struggling mentally with my, sorry, I was struggling with my mental health at that moment. And when I came back, that is when a Hoya bloomed for me. Yeah. And it was crazy because it was like such a welcoming gift. Right. It was such a gift, right? Right. To go back to my greenhouse and see that was just so like, wow, like, all I needed to give you was a little neglect to yeah. <laughs> bloom. Right? Yeah. Right there into a little S&M. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's like you treat them bad and they really yeah. reward you. And they yeah. really reward you. 